Hey guys, Andy here, and we gotta talk. And thankfully, it's about something positive for once in 2020. Jeez, Pete's. So, as of today, guys, it's official. I have graduated from Lakeland University, Japan. Just had our graduation ceremony, and it was all done online, so I was literally just sitting over there <laughs> on the computer in my t-shirt, my jammies, uh, getting all graduated. It's definitely very surreal. Uh, it still hasn't quite sunk in yet in the old uh, head brain that uh, I finally did it and uh, graduated with my first post-secondary degree. You know, if you would have told me 16 years ago when I graduated high school back in 04, yeah, you boy's a bit of an old head. But if you would have told me that 16 years later, I would be going to college in Japan and graduating and doing it all from my own Japanese apartment, guest house, right in front of the computer, in my jammies and t-shirt. <laughs> I would not have believed a word that you said. It was all complete fantasy during that time, especially with uh, limitations of technology and whatnot. But also, just the fact that I would even be able to go to Japan at the time was such a far-flung fantasy. When I was a kid, what got me interested in Japan initially were my cousins who were stationed out in Yokosuka during the uh, early to mid-90s. And, you know, they would constantly talk about their time out here in Japan, and they would send me back in Ohio gifts and all kinds of stuff. And that's what really gave the idea of going out to Japan to visit. My family was supposed to visit them, but, uh, you know, due to some personal stuff that happened, never got that chance. The idea kind of died at that point, but it was still always there in the back of my mind that I was gonna at least visit Japan just to see what it's like in person. And, you know, one thing led to another was uh, going to college and that's when the first wave of uh, J vloggers came around on YouTube. Saw guys like uh, Tokyo Kuni and the late great Roger Swan. Swan especially had an impact on me because you know he and I were close in age. He was a year younger than me and he was studying abroad in Japan going to Keio University. That was such an appealing route for me because before, you know, all these other people who were out in Japan making videos or whatever, they all had bachelor's degrees and jobs and all this and that and the other. And, you know, being a college dropout at the time, I didn't see a path for me to get out here to Japan. I just thought it was completely closed off. And I was like, well, you know, I guess this is it for me. You know, that, that's the only way I'm gonna get my Japan fix is watching people who are already in Japan doing it. When I got those orders in, in 2013 to transfer out to Yokosuka, Japan, when I was in the Navy, and I landed at Yokota Air Force Base, I was finally in the country for the first time. It seemed like a dream come true, like this is all just some weird fever dream. One day I'm just gonna wake up and I'll be back in San Diego where I was stationed at previously. But nah, it was 100% real. As you guys could tell from the original Andy Japandi series that I had on uh, my now personal channel, I was just having a blast. When my time in the military was up, at the time I didn't know you could study abroad out here on the GI Bill. So I figured I had a good run out here, but uh, it was time for me to go back to America, uh, get my degree, and come back to Japan once again, but uh, to be an English teacher. And uh, from there, just kind of figure it out. As you guys know, life takes many, many turns and went through a really bad depressive episode when uh, I was in school out in Michigan. And it really affected my grades and just my own mental health, you know? And it just got to a point where I had to drop out of college once again to, uh, to just figure myself out. And it was 
really devastating, you know, like at the time I, I felt like I really needed it because I was just so burnt out with, with everything, just trying to, trying to make it work because, you know, when I dropped out the first time many, many years ago, it was because I didn't have enough money. And this time I thought it was going to be different because, you know, I'm a little older, a little wiser. I don't have to worry about money because I'm on the GI Bill. So everything will be taken care of. All I got to do is just show up to class, do the work, and uh, carry on smartly. But uh, life had, had other plans. After uh, I got out of school again, <laughs> being a uh, two-time dropout, that's when I connected with uh, my old shipmate. He was uh, my former LPO, actually. And he told me that he was getting out of the Navy and uh, going to school out at uh, Temple University in Japan. And I was asking him, like, how can you do that? Like, I thought the GI Bill was only usable in America. Like, how are you able to, to afford that? He's like, oh, no, it's Temple's basically like a, an American school because, you know, it's a satellite campus of the original one out in uh, back in America. Hey guys, Editor Andy here, and one more person I would be remiss in not giving a shout out would be Jim from the Kid Shore You Can channel. Jim is a fellow veteran like myself, and he's also a fellow alumni of Lakeland University of Japan. It was all thanks to Jim for recommending me to Lakeland in the first place, because after I got rejected by Temple, I didn't know where else I could go. Jim reached out to me and he told me everything about Lakeland and helped me get in. It's all thanks to him that uh, this is possible. Definitely major shout out to Jim of the Kid Shuriken channel. Cannot recommend his channel enough, especially if you're into the retro Japanese video games. He's got you covered. So anyway, back to the video. And it just kind of, you know, started a little spark to uh, make me think, you know, Coming back to America kind of got me on this whole depressive funk because I didn't really know who I was. And I felt like, you know, going back to Japan, I would, you know, figure things out again. I would be creatively inspired again because I felt very stifled living out in Michigan and later Ohio. I just felt like it was just in a total environment, just full of gray, lifeless machinery. I figured. You know, I just need to get back to Japan to uh, figure myself out again. At that point, my GPA began with a decimal point. And I hadn't been in school for a year and a half. So when I applied to this very school, Lakeland University of Japan, I had to have a meeting, basically like an interview, with the dean and a couple teachers just to kind of get them a feel for who I am and uh, what are my goals and things like that. And I thought it was gonna be something like that, you know, a bit like a basic job interview, just kind of, you know, get a feel for who, who I am and stuff. The Dean basically spent like 15 minutes, you know, just grilling me about why my GPA was, was such dog shit and just making me feel like a complete piece of shit, to be honest with you guys. When that Skype call was, 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 uh, was done, I felt so worthless. I felt like that's it, you know, because I couldn't get into Temple at the time because, you know, again, my GPA <laughs> began with a decimal point and they didn't accept me. And now Lakeland is rejecting me. So I'm like, what the hell am I going to do now? So instead of just rolling over and accepting my fate, it, uh, it lit a fire under my ass. And so I decided to uh, rehab my GPA, show them I'm serious about this, and took a couple classes at community college to uh, boost things over at uh, Fayetteville Tech in uh, North Carolina. And when I reapplied, he was really impressed, the Dean was, of my academic improvements. So he decided to accept me into Lakeland under probationary conditions so it basically means that I can't go below for uh, can't go below a 2.0 GPA and if I do then I'll, I'll be immediately academically dismissed 
and it's a little different when you're academically dismissed in a foreign country because not only can you not go to school you can't exist in the country anymore so you guys have to go back home basically so it's a lot on the line some pretty high stakes but i accepted it took a couple more classes at favel tech to uh boost my creds as well as save up some months on the uh, GI Bill. Uh, the end of December 2019, fast approaching the one year anniversary of my re-arrival back in Japan, I, well, came back to Japan. And I stayed at the uh, guest house out in uh, Nakano Shimbashi. Lived in literally a wooden box. Like, you guys have seen the, uh, the tour videos. I was living in a box, like, no ands, ifs, or buts about it, but it was cheap, it was in Tokyo, and it was mine. I felt like I had finally arrived. I was just on cloud nine, you know, it's like, all right, I'm finally here, all my hard, hard work is paid off, let's go. So my original plans were to um, attend Lakeland for two semesters, graduate, and then transfer over to uh, Temple University of Japan with uh, my associates in hand, and then continue on for uh, my bachelor's. During the second semester, I had submitted my application to Temple. At that point, at, in Lakeland, I had about a 3.3-ish GPA, so I was doing pretty darn good. And I figured it was uh, an easy win, right? Just apply. I talked with uh, the student liaison over there. He just had very high hopes about everything, just saying everything's all good, no worries, just gonna be an easy get, right? But, as I said before, life has other plans. And I got rejected from Temple. And it was at that moment where I felt like, is this it? Did I really risk all of that? to come out here only to have, you know, my knees cut out from under me. And there was, um, there was a moment where I, I thought about giving up. I thought about just being like, all right, between Clone Chain World Tour, Temple rejecting me, and all this other stuff, like, I gotta give it up, man. <laughs> it just, I can't do this anymore. You know, but there's also another voice saying, you know, did you really come this far to only get this far? And I decided, you know what? If I'm going, if I'm going down, I'm going down swinging. I decided to fight back, basically, and uh, just finish that semester as strongly as I could. But when I got the temple rejection, it was right before midterms. Midterms really sucker punched me. And I didn't have a whole lot of opportunities to fight back and recover. So because of that, my grades weren't as high as I'd wanted. And I ended up failing my math class. Not only <laughs> did I come like three credits away from graduating, I failed my math class. So now my GPA is lowered. The whole reason Temple rejected me was because of my past mistakes. They didn't take into account my improvement over the past year and a half from going to Fayetteville Tech, rehabbing my GPA, going to Lakeland during a pandemic, and still maintaining that GPA. It wasn't good enough for them. And because of all that, it, you know, just led me to get in this little depressive funk and it was hard for me to, to bounce back. You know, when I saw the failing math grade, because it was a required class, like, I was set to graduate the previous semester, but because I failed math, I, I couldn't. So I just felt so devastated. I'm like, Gee, you know, what do I do? Do I lose my visa? Do I have to go back to America? Like, what's, what's going to happen? But thankfully, I talked with uh, the staff over at Lakeland, and I was able to not only retake the math class, but also take other classes at Lakeland because 
When I told them about all this, they also gave me some information about what's uh, going to be going on at Lakeland. And that is, they're going to be starting up a bachelor's program. And they wanted me to be one of the first students to uh, be a part of that. You know, when, when I got that, that email from, from the staff over at Lakeland, I, I was in tears. Like, so I thought everything was over, you know. I thought I'd have to have to go back to, to Ohio or North Carolina or something, work in a factory the rest of my life, because I, I had nothing. But that continued to give me some hope that I can still continue to, to live out here and to do my thing. I dusted myself off and signed up for, uh, for all the classes. And uh, I finished this semester and I finished it strong. Now, at the time of this recording, I don't have all of my grades from this semester, unfortunately. So the first three grades are official, but my math grade is unofficial. I basically just counted out how much I got from uh, all the homework and tests and stuff. For my core two class, I got an AB, which is like an A minus, B plus, somewhere in between. For my general business course, I got an A. For my microeconomics course, I got a B. And for my math course, the same course I failed previous semester, I got a B minus, unofficially for that last one, I wanna add. My GPA, I guess would be over 3.0 or at 3.0. I <laughs> only got a B minus in math, folks, so I, I can't do it off the top of my head. But I did it. I graduated and uh, now I can move on to the next piece of business in life. It just seems so surreal that I went through all this and uh, finally succeeded. So I'm sure you guys are probably wondering, well, what's going to happen to the old Andy Sansi and Modesta? When, what am I going to be doing moving forward? So the plans are to switch my student visa over to a job hunting visa, which is technically designated activities visa. Then I'm going to work for a video production company that teaches different languages. Uh, they're based out in Tokyo. So I'm working for them in addition to continuing to do freelance work and other stuffs on the side. And once the bachelor's program for Lakeland is set to start, I'll rejoin as a student again. And at the time of this recording, they're scheduled to start for the summer semester, so around May-ish, I believe. But, as we all know, in life, card is subject to change. So, just gotta keep an open mind and uh, keep close. So, I just want to take this time to thank you guys out there for, uh, for all the support. You know, I just, you know, reading all your comments and all the direct messages and everything that you send me. You know, I, I read all that stuff. And I'm just, I'm so thankful also for the Discord community that we've, we've built up. It's pretty small right now. Times recording, it's around 69 members. Nice. <laughs> but it is a nice community full of great discussion. And it's actually thanks to that community, as well as the videos I've put up on here, that I managed to help three oncoming students at Lakeland take initiative to not, to apply to Lakeland, get accepted, and they're gonna be starting in the spring of 2021. Woo. So to think that little old me from nowhere Ohio with only a handful of subs can manage to change the lives of at least three people, well four, me. <laughs> I know, cheesy, whatever. But to think that uh, I have had such an impact on other people's lives. You know, I don't mean to say it to like humble brag or whatever, like I'm something special, but 
you know, it, this is why I do YouTube. You know, a lot of people get it twisted and think that I'm just in it for the subs or the money or the views or whatever. And don't get me wrong, those things are nice. You know, it's 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 a nice feeling to know when that uh, Google paycheck hits. It's a pretty good feeling. But an even better feeling is affecting people's lives for the better. It fills me with so much joy to know that uh, that I'm doing that despite everything going on in the world and despite everything going against me. So, I'll just end things here. So, with that said guys, this is the Andy-san, all graduated with my associates from Lakeland University of Japan, signing off for now, and as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. Oh,